You're listening to It's Not Normal, It's Toxic with Dr. Heidi, a toxic relationship specialist. Here, we bring hope, healing, and freedom to those who have been affected by toxic relationships and emotional abuse. Learn to not only recognize a red flag when you see one, but have the courage to choose yourself and move forward in a life that's free from toxic control of others. Living in an environment that's not healthy for you can cause this type of abuse to be accepted as normal. The truth is, it's not normal. It's toxic. Hey everybody, welcome back. You're listening to It's Not Normal, It's Toxic. Rid your life of toxic people. This is your host, Dr. Heidi. If you're listening for the first time, welcome. If you are a returning listener, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a subject that has been asked about several times for several months. And I'm going to do my best to cover the topic of are they in-laws or are they outlaws? This is a tough subject. The reason this is a tough subject is when toxic in-laws come into play into your relationships, it affects other relationships. It affects the relationship that you have with your spouse. It affects the relationships that you have with your kids. It expects it affects the relationships that your kids have with their cousins. Um, when you marry, we all have this picture of what our marriage is going to look like. Of course, we have the house with the white picket fence, with the kids, with the dogs with the family events, with the great holiday traditions, and with the in-laws that adopt us as their own, right? That's what we all think when we're getting married. Now, that doesn't sound like the way your marriage with the in-law situation is set up. Well, don't be alarmed because I don't think you're the only person that struggles with the toxicity in a family situation. In the beginning, and I'm saying probably way in the beginning, you probably noticed sometimes when you did feel uncomfortable around your future in-laws. Um, if it didn't show up early on in the dating, it might have showed up after the engagement or possibly in the wedding planning. And what you would have noticed was the in-laws want their way or one of the in-laws wants their way and feel like they have a lot larger say in the wedding plans, in the parenting plans, in the family plans, in where you live, in you know how you go about your life, then they really should. And of course, in the beginning, you try to keep everything very calm. You realize that this is your spouse's parents. You cater to them, you try to be nice, you bring the right dish for the potluck, um, you show up before the family events to help clean. You stay up after the family events to clean. You don't ask about the calendar. You show up when you're told because you don't want to be the one that rocks the boat. You're wanting acceptance into this new family so that you can have the blissful, cute marriage and life that you had always pictured since you were little. Sooner or later, you will feel like you're fighting a losing battle. And now not only that, you're starting to sense tension between you and your spouse when things come up with their parents. One of the things you need to realize is if you're sensing this, you are probably not the only person that these people have been toxic to. Now remember, let's go back to the beginning. A toxic relationship is any relationship that's unhealthy for you mentally or physically or emotionally in the state that it's in. These are the people that raised your spouse. So if they grew up in this environment and it's always been like this, they're not going to know the difference. Refer back to the stick fetcher episode of my podcast. They've been trained to fetch sticks. They've been trained to continually hope that they're accepted by their parents either both or one or the other. And they always have their attention on their parents for approval. They're still kids. We all want our parents to be proud and we all want their approval. So you have to realize that they're probably not just toxic to you, but because your spouse has been raised in it, it's completely normal to them. Chances are 
They've been controlling most of their lives by obligation, maybe the emotion of guilt, maybe making them feel not accepted or not good enough. So your spouse's attention is always on them and making them proud. Here you come and you bring an entirely new element to the group. You've just changed the family dynamic. Somebody stepping into a family is certainly not going to take the power away from the toxic person. So the toxic person has to be very quick to stay in command. You'll notice that the family dynamic feels uncomfortable. One of the 21 character traits that I teach is tension. That feeling in your stomach that tells you something is wrong or something is unsafe. As soon as you realize that, you're probably going to go to your spouse and try and stand your ground on the things that you've been feeling and the things that you agree or don't agree with in how the in-laws operate. In doing so, you're also going to find that you're very quickly put second on the list. Because your spouse has always been trained by obligation and guilt and for the continual search for acceptance and approval to always put the toxic parent first. So they're not really doing anything that that's new. They're doing the same thing they've always done. The toxic parent or the toxic parent gets pert before anybody because the last thing you want to do is be in trouble or the last thing you want to do is cause conflict or be criticized for the choices that you've made. If you've been raised by a toxic parent, your choices have been dictated to you through your upbringing. So the last thing you're going to do is once again have to pay for the wrong decision. You're obliga they're obligated to their parents, which means they're going to be less obligated to you when issues come up. They would rather have conflict with you than they would with their parents. They already know the consequences. They've seen them over and over. They were raised by these people. So in your spouse's defense, they're only doing what they've always done. They've on they're only continuing to do what, they're what they were trained to do being raised in that type of environment. Toxic is toxic and toxic in-laws need to feel attention. And you're in the picture and all the attention that they once got from their child, AKA your spouse is now divided. Remember toxic people need control, power, attention, and admiration in order to feel secure. And you have just invaded that security level by taking their hundred percent attention down to a lower percentage. Now this attention, this control, all of this stuff has to be split with you. So to the toxic person, you're actually a threat. To the toxic in-laws, you're a threat of taking their power that they hold over your spouse away. Toxic people feel better when other people are struggling. I say that all the time. So it's, you're going to be very quick to get criticisms from the in-laws, the way, ways you can do things better. Maybe how your spouse likes things handled or how your spouse likes things cooked or how you'll get tips from the in-laws to make you feel inferior because that makes a toxic person feel better. Now, just to get a bigger picture of this, it's very seldom to have two toxic people in the same household at the same time married to each other because a toxic person needs control and attention all the time. So to dump two of those people in a marriage for very long, normally they won't last. So chances are one of the in-laws is toxic and one of the in-laws is catering to that toxicity, which is just a trickle down effect of the same thing that's going on in your household. The one that's less toxic is going to cater to the toxic one because they don't want conflict. So when you're going up against toxic in-laws, you feel like they're both toxic, but really what you're probably dealing with is one that doesn't want to upset the other one, just like your spouse doesn't want to upset them. And just like you don't want to upset them. So normally one is in control and the other one is catering because the other one has been trained by years of living with them. Toxic in-laws, toxic people are going to try to come between you and your spouse. They're going to try to make your spouse choose one over the other because when they're chosen first, they get the attention. When they're chosen first, they feel control. When they know that you're feeling bad about a decision, they feel better. 
So they're always going to prompt situations and prompt things to make your spouse choose them over you. Now this can get frustrating for those of you who marry into a situation like this because in a marriage, your partner should be your first priority. You know, we leave our mom and dad to build a life of our own. So that's where the priority should lie. But when they're continually being told and they've continually been trained to cater to the toxic parent, it takes a huge undertaking to unprogram that. You know, the people that I help out of, out of toxic marriages, it takes a couple years to unprogram you from the way you were programmed to think while you were in that toxic marriage. So if you've been raised in a toxic environment like many of your spouses have, it takes a while to unprogram. They're just doing what they've always done. But toxic parents are not gonna allow anyone else to come in and take their attention and the control away. So they're gonna cause drama and they're gonna cause chaos. Because when there's drama and chaos going on, the attention is on the in-laws exactly where they want it. So they're gonna make demands to your spouse that they know is gonna cause problems in the marriage which is basically going to make your spouse choose one or the other. It gets attention and it makes them feel powerful to be able to cause emotional reactions in others. If they can make your marriage miserable, they will get the full attention of their child back. Because if their child is having trouble in their marriage, where are they going to go? Probably talk to mom and dad, right? So this constant supply of injecting drama into the lives of those that they're around is all by means of feeling control. It's very, very unfair to you who stepped into this relationship not knowing, not knowing the full dynamics of it. At this point, we're gonna go back to, you can't control what they do, you can't control what they say, the only thing you can control is how you react to it, and it's probably time to have a conversation with your spouse. They may or may not recognize that their parents have been toxic to them or that they were raised in an unhealthy environment. But if you can lead by example, they may realize it sooner or later. Chances are they've never lived without feeling like this, so they wouldn't know the difference. I know marriages that have failed because, not because the, the people didn't love each other, but because the obligation and the guilt that was put into the relationship by the in-laws was way stronger than the commitment that they had to each other. The fear of the what ifs, if they would upset the parents, were stronger than the security that they had in their own relationship. What if we upset mom and dad? You know, what if they get mad at us? What if they cut us out of the will? What if they don't include us? All those what ifs kept these, these couple of relationships that I'm thinking of off the top of my head, kept the spouse obligated to their parents, letting their spouse go. Now, that to me is very, very unhealthy. Toxic is toxic and parents are parents. But if you're being controlled by your parents, or you're being controlled by your in-laws, you have the right to remove yourself from that story. And I'm not saying remove yourself from your marriage, but you get to make the decision on who's in your life and who's not and at what level. This will be a difficult conversation with your spouse because it is going to cause problems between your family and the in-laws. How you would approach this is by telling your spouse that it's not what's best for me to be involved in situations where I'm in contact with your, with your parents. If you have to go no contact, I understand that and I can help you with that. Um, whatever you need to do to make your, yourself feel safe so that you don't fall under their control. If your spouse does not like your decision, this is gonna sound bad, but that's too bad. They're gonna to have to respect you enough to accept that it's not what's best for you and it's a decision that you're making for your mental health and your safety. And that, that you in no way are gonna stand, 
going to stand in the relationship between them and their parents that your spouse gets to choose the relationship that they have with their parents. You get to choose the relationship that you have with your parents. When having to interact with toxic in-laws, be strategic about it. Stay away from topics that cause stress. Decrease the time of visits. Don't go for a week. Go for five days. Increase your time between visits. Go twice a year instead of four times a year. Don't spend every holiday with them. Start switching up holidays. Do every other Christmas. Do every other Thanksgiving. But distance yourself enough that you can still build the traditions and the family that you want and honor your spouse's, honor and respect your spouse in their decision to keep a relationship with their in-laws. Now, that being said, you will always be the problem and your spouse will hear about how you're always the problem from the in-laws, but you're, you will be prepared for that. You know that the reason for their, for their behavior is loss of control of their child and you not submitting to the control that they wanted to have over you. Toxic in-laws are just like any other toxic person and we handle them exactly the same. They need to see an emotional reaction to remind them that they can control you. If you pull out any emotion when interacting with them, ta-da, you just took their power away. The toxic in-law situation may require you and your spouse to agree to disagree, and that's okay. You know, strong relationships are not built on people that are dependent on each other. Strong relations are built from two people who are independent of each other and can make their own decisions and respect each other's decisions. So hopefully you can get to a place where you each respect the decision you make concerning the relationship that you're having with your in-laws. And hope and pray that your spouse will begin to see how you thrive after not being controlled and having anxiety and being anxious over having to deal with their parents. And maybe they'll start understanding how you got to the place that you're at. And maybe they'll start asking questions on how come you didn't feel guilty and what do we do if they get mad and what's the worst thing that can happen. When they see that you're no longer stressed, they may begin to follow you. However, nagging and barking at your spouse about how terrible their parents are is not going to help. Remember, these are their parents and they, they love them and they still want their parents to be proud and they still want acceptance from their parents and they still wanna please their parents. So until they get to a point where they realize that maybe their upbringing wasn't as healthy as they thought it was, you have to respect and give them time to make the decision that they need to make in regards to their relationship with their parents. With you being a free will to make the decision that you wanna make. Now we come to the topic of grandkids, okay? If you know the in-laws are toxic, it is gonna be very hard for you to allow them to see your kids. Again, if you and your spouse are in agreement and you have voiced your boundary about not interacting with them or interacting with them on a restricted level, you need to trust that your spouse is gonna make the right choices when it comes to the grandkids. Allow your spouse to handle it. Talk about what your expectations are. Are you doing overnights? Are you not doing overnights? Are you gonna be there when they're there? Because what you don't want is you don't want the in-law or in-laws trying to get control of the kids through their emotional manipulation. So that's gonna be, have to be something that's very, very communicated. And, and you're probably gonna to have to trust your spouse in the fact that he will be careful when the kids are with their grandparents. Um, that again is gonna be different in every scenario. I always say this, I don't push people to do a session with me, but because when kids and grandkids comes into play, there's so many different variations to the situation. I like to know more about your exact situation before I give very much more information on that. So with the case of toxic in-laws, 
Your choice is really to lead by example in a situation like that. If your spouse never sees it, continue to be consistent and at least you have freed yourself from the immediate contact that causes the anxiety, that causes the tension, and that causes your feeling of hopelessness when you're involved with the in-laws. Remember, the definition of in-laws is relatives by marriage. We're not even, we're not even obligated to our relatives if they're unhealthy for us. So just because they're your spouse's parents, do not feel like you have to compromise yourself, compromise your values, or compromise what you stand for and be involved in that type of relationship. Only you can decide what's healthy for you and what's not. And if you're in a situation where the in-laws are not, that is your decision. Respect your spouse enough to allow them to make the same decision and stay in communication with each other. If you are not a member of the Strength Within support group that we have on Facebook, that is a great place to be. It's almost 1,800 people. Um, I keep that group very, very positive. I'm very picky on not letting the energy of the toxic people come in there. People tell their stories, um, but there's a lot of encouragement in there. So if you're looking for other people who may be in the same situation with as you, um, that is a great place to start. You go on Facebook and search Strength Within. Um, there's a few questions to answer and you will be admitted. Um, group coaching sessions are starting up the 1st of November. One of the classes is already full. There's a couple openings on the Wednesday morning at 8.30 Central Standard Time. And there's another time slotted for 3.30 on Thursdays. It's beginning the first week in Mar of November. And it will run for eight consecutive weeks with a little wiggle room for Christmas, depending on what the attendees have going on. Uh, what is the group coaching? The group coaching is basically my entire private program, but we go through it with three or four other people. So you have an immediate support system that knows your story and can be there um, for help between, um, between classes. Uh, it's just nice to have people that know what's going on so that when you need to reach out, there's somebody there. The 2021 conference dates have been on. There's not a lot of details out, but if you want to mark your calendar, the 2021 It's Not Normal, It's Toxic conference will be in St. Louis, March 26th through the 28th of 2021. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And as always, thank you for sharing this podcast. We are getting close to a, a quarter of a million downloads, which blows my mind. Um, Keep up the questions. If you've got topics that you want to hear about, let me know. You guys know how to get a hold of me. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to It's Not Normal, It's Toxic. If your life is being affected by a toxic relationship, visit coachingwithdrheidi.com and take our free toxicity profile analysis or schedule a personalized consultation with Dr. Heidi. You can also follow us on Instagram at Coaching with Dr. Heidi or join our private Facebook group at Strength Within. Take your first step to freedom today. And remember, it's not normal, it's toxic. Thank you.